Good day to everyone. My name is Tracy Mayfield, and I'm an archaeologist at the University of Southern California in Los Angeles, and I've been working with Belize Archaeology since 2009. Today I will be presenting on two colonial period settlements at Lamanai and San Pedro, Belize, but first, thank you to Heritage Education Network Belize for holding this seminar. Having the opportunity to hear from a wide range of heritage stakeholders on a variety of foci is an incredible opportunity for us all, and I value the time we have together this week. So to begin, during the 19th century, Latin America and the wider Caribbean was a hotbed of trade and commerce driven principally by ex extractive industries, such as agriculture, principally sugar but not solely, and hardwood collection. Such ventures required large injections of capital into the creation and maintenance of productive landscapes, and also into specialized infrastructure used for housing and feeding of workers who provided labor and management for these ventures, which in turn created archaeological contexts that can give us insight into the day-to-day -day lives of the people who were active in these spaces in the past. During the 18th and 19th centuries, British colonists established settlements at two Belizean sites, which will be presented here today. At Lamanai, an inland forest site, which is located in what is now the Orange Walk District of northwestern Belize, to plant sugarcane and harvest logwood and mahogany, and at San Pedro Town, located off the coast of Belize on Ambergris Key to cultivate a, a, a coconut plantation. Today's presentation utilizes data collected at Lamanai over the past 40 years, along with new materials excavated at Lamanai in 2014 and at San Pedro Town in 2017. I will compare and contrast these two sites, situated in very different environmental, culture, and economic landscapes, but also within the broader colonial industrial complex. And please note that while both sites had long-term complex Maya occupations, Due to the time restraints, I will only be discussing the 18th and 19th century settlements below uh, today. Along with cooking, storing, and serving vessels, fresh beef, chicken, and pork, and bottled, canned, and barreled products such as soda water, salted pork, condiments, and potted meat were consumed in great quantities at both sites. The colonial period residents of Lamanai and San Pedro Town were also active consumers of tobacco, bottled medicines, health and hygiene products, for example, chamber pots, tools, and wearable objects such as buttons and boot heels. Lamanai, or Indian Church, as it was known in the 19th century, is located in the Orange Walk District of northern Walk, northwestern Belize. It is a lowland, broad-leaved, subtropical inland forest site situated on the western shore of New River Lagoon. The site has moist, shallow limestone soils and has likely been impacted by flooding frequently in its long residential history. This map covers the majority of the Lamanai built landscape, which is mostly Maya features. The red box represents the main boundaries of the colonial period settlement and its structures, which are of both Spanish and British origin, but only the British period material assemblage will be discussed today. In the early 19th century, British colonists established a sugar plantation at Lamanai, which had long been and continued to be long after the demise of the sugar venture, an area exploited for logwood and mahogany. No formal records of British occupation exist until 1837, when 200 acres were given to the British under the Indian Church Plantation Grant in order to plant sugarcane and build a sugar mill at the site. While sugarcane may have been planted soon after the original grant, the mill itself was not in operation until at least 1866, which is the date on the mill ironworks. The last known documented occupants of the British plantation at Lamanai during the 19th century were soldiers stationed at the site in 1868, although the archaeological records suggest that people continued to live on the site in varying numbers over time, which continues to this day. This is a small sampling of the colonial period artifacts recovered at Lamanai. The majority of the recovered artifacts and materials are related to everyday practices, such as eating, drinking, taking medicine, and smoking. San Pedro is located on Ambergris Key, the northernmost offshore barrier, barrier island along the coast of Belize. The island is 39 kilometers long and no wider than 4 kilometers at any point, and it lies just west of the barrier reef the longest continuous coral structure in the Western Hemisphere, and the second longest barrier reef in the world. A large variety of fish and self shellfish species native to the barrier reef were exploited by the ancient Maya. 
Those resources were also utilized by colonial entities and are still, still sought to this day. Early occupation of San Pedro Town began when ownership rights of the island claimed by the von Olafen family via squatters' rights around 1850. The Cast Wars hampered development in the mid-19th century, but sustained occupation and steady population growth was resumed after 1855. San Pedro Town is first mentioned in historical documents in 1850, and after a series of owners and subsequent bankruptcies, the Blake family purchased the island in 1869 and started a coconut plantation. The lands were distributed between British families who had fled the Cast Wars, which began a period of construction and increased permanent settlement. Sustained settlement has continued to this day. This is a small sampling of the colonial period artifacts recovered at San Pedro Town, which as you can see is similar to the assemblage from Lamanai. The majority of recovered artifacts and materials are related to everyday practices, such as eating, drinking, taking medicine, and smoking. But of note here, these artifacts are from a single level of a 3 by 3 meter archaeological unit, which contained a mixture of both Maya and British artifacts due to the constant up and down movement of sandy beach soils over time. I also wanted to show you some samples of faunal remains covered at the San Pedro Town site. There is excellent bone preservation here as compared with specimens collected at Lamanai, where the soil is considerably more acidic, which I will discuss further in a moment. The San Pedro Town Artifact Assemblage consists of 4,693 objects and dates from approximately 1720 through present day. The mean occupation date is 1893. The bulk of the artifacts were produced post-1840 and before 1890, although some ceramic wares, for, uh, for example whiteware, are still produced today, which impacts the tenacity of, the, of dating formula outcomes and can skew median occupations later in time than was actually the case. To this end, the San Pedro Town site mean occupation date utilizes known production dates of ceramics, glass, and nails, while the Lamanai mean occupation date was based on ceramic technologies only. While only one feature, a tabby wall, was recovered at the San Pedro Town site, the artifact dates are consistent with the late colonial history of Ambergris Key, and the ceramic data, detailed further in a moment, along with the high volume and variety of alcoholic beverage containers, soda bottles, and medicines, and a low percentage of construction materials and archaeological, uh, I'm sorry, architectural objects, suggests that at some point during the second half of the 19th century, there was a, re a, a restaurant or boarding house on or near the property, and not a single family home that utilized the space for trash disposal. Alternatively, the space may have served as a general disposal area for multiple dwellings and or businesses post-1830. At Lamanai, the artifact assemblage consists of 4,765 ob objects and dates from approximately 1775 through present day. The mean occupation date was 1854, based on ceramic dates of production. The Lamanai assemblage and built environment, which includes a sugar mill, labor and supervisors housing, and churches, suggests that while the number of people living and working at the site fluctuated over time, there has been continuous occupation of the site from the formation of the British colony to the present. At San Pedro town, the bulk of recovered materials were related to foodways act foodway activities. Um, for example, food storage preparation and serving vessels, and this includes bottles, cans, and other object forms. Um, along with personal items and construction, household, health and hygiene, and architectural materials uh, make up the remaining portion of the assemblage. At Lamanai, similar to the pattern seen at the San Pedro town site, the bulk of the Lamanai assemblage was also related to foodways. At Lamanai, ceramic objects made up 21.2% of the total site assemblage. Eleven distinct ceramic types, ware types were recovered, the bulk of which were whiteware, pearlware, and banded slipwares. At San Pedro Town, ceramic objects made up 31.2% of the total site assemblage. Thirteen ware types were recovered, the bulk of which were whitewares manufactured post-1830. The large percentage of whiteware also suggests a restaurant or boarding house present at the site during the 19th century. Utilizing heavy-bodied whitewares that would stand up to repeated use by guests over time would be a good financial decision as compared with more expensive, less robust wares that would break more readily. 
While the number of wear types are similar between the sites, the amount of pearl wear at Lamini suggests an early sparsely populated settlement which grew over time, as white wear for the most part displaced pearl wear in the first quarter of the 19th century. And the small amount of wares other than white wares at San Pedro town suggest more of a quick population explosion around the mid 19th century. At Lamini, 15 unique ceramic objects were, object forms were identified. The highest frequency forms were bowls, plates, teacups, and saucers. Of note, very few smoking pipe fragments were recovered at Lamini. At San Pedro Town, 22 unique ceramic object forms were identified. The highest frequency forms, similar to Lamini, were plates, bowls, saucers, and teacups. But 143 smoking pipes were recovered, which is 14.2% of the total ceramic assemblage. Interestingly, chamber pots made up the fifth, the fifth most frequent object form, 4.6% in the San Pedro Town assemblage. The large number of chamber pots and the wide variety of forms, both ceramic and glass, which will not be covered in this presentation, again suggest that not a single family household, uh, suggests not a single family household, but rather a boarding house or communal dump was located on the property in the mid to, uh, mid to late 19th century. At Lamini, 12 decoration types were identified, although that number is higher if each individual color is counted. For example, eight different transfer print colors. The most frequent decoration types were transfer printed, glazed, banded, and sponged. At San Pedro Town, 22 ceramic decoration types were identified, although, again, that number is higher if each individual color is counted. The most frequent decoration types were glazed, transfer print, floral painted underglaze, banded, and sponged. Again here, the sheer number of different decorations type, decoration types at San Pedro Town suggest either, suggests either multiple households or a restaurant or boarding facility, as opposed to a single family home, because a restaurant or boarding house would frequently buy new wares to replace broken or chipped items due to repeated use by a large number of people, resulting in a more variable material record. At San Pedro Town, 46 distinct taxonomic identifications were noted in the assemblage. Wild specimens made up 16 per, I'm sorry, 67 percent of the total identified faunal assemblage, and domestic specimens account for 16.5 percent. A large wild fauna percentage is expected from an island or coastal site due to the majority of meat food being harvested from abundant marine environments. At Lamini, wild specimens make up 74% of the total identified faunal assemblage, and domestic spe specimens account for 8.5%. 26 taxonomic identifications were noted in the assemblage, and a large wild fauna percentage is expected from a forested site located on a large lagoon, such as Lamini. It must be noted here that salted pork may have contributed to consumptive biomass after colonial contact, but those taxa do not leave a significant trace in the faunal record. A large number of metal barrel straps were recovered during the 2019 exca 2017 excavations, but the contents of those wooden barrels are currently unknown. Lastly, I wanted to mention here that a major, a major difference between the material assemblages at San Pedro Town and Lamini is the state of preservation. At Lamini, Lamini has very acidic soil, which you can clearly see makes a difference. The photos here represent similar artifacts and faunal specimens from the mid-1800s, but the San Pedro Town artifacts at the top are so well preserved they look like they could have been used yesterday. And the faunal specimens from San Pedro Town are also extremely well preserved. Notably, even though both sites were located near major marine resources, only a few fishbone fragments were covered at Lamini due to bone composition from highly acidic soil, as compared with the San Pedro Town site, where we recovered hundreds of fish specimens. Clearly, the residents of Lamini would have been eating fish, but there is little evidence of these activities preserved in the archaeological record. In conclusion, during the 19th century, the settlements at San Pedro Town and Lamini were similar to one another in many respects. At both locations, as is standard at most colonial period sites where people both lived and worked, the most prevalent objects recovered during archaeological excavations were materials related to foodways and consumptive practices. Personal items at both sites made up less than 5% of the total assemblages, suggesting temporary, seasonal, or transient living conditions, 
which coincides with the known histories and landscape use of the 19th century occupants. While there are many similarities between the sites, there are also key differences, the most obvious being the natural environment and socioeconomic activities. Lamanai, an inland forested site situated on a major river, was a sugar plantation and hardware extraction resource. And while San Pedro Town, a reef-protected island port location, was a coconut plantation for a period of time, it has also been an important port of trade for the majority of its human settlement. Another key difference between the site assemblages is the variety of ceramics, specifically forms and decoration at the San Pedro Town site compared to Lamanai. Lastly, although 19th century residents at both sites were consuming both wild and domestic meat foods, there was a great deal more variety present at the San Pedro Town site, although this may be due to acidic soils and also due um, to the use of salted pork and other um, barreled meats as well. In closing, the key differences between the San Pedro Town sites and Lamanai are natural variety uh, our natural environment and preservation, use of space, amount of space, and the material and vinyl variety. Material and faunal uh, variation may be due to the accessibility of San Pedro as compared to Lamanai, although riverine travel was and continues to be common. So the lack of variation at Lamanai may ultimately be due to different drivers such as economics. Clearly, additional data are needed before more precise interpretations can be made, but site level analysis has elucidated clear behavioral variability between the 19th century, uh, in the 19th century between Lamanai and San Pedro Town. And that concludes today's presentation. Thank you so much for the opportunity to talk about archaeology at Lamanai and San Pedro Town. Please feel free to contact me if you have any questions or comments.